Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of 60 Formula. Hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to be talking about pups. And I'm not talking about these two, I'm talking about little itty baby pupperoonies. You know what I mean? The pupperoonie pizza type. The type that you order up and you bring home and you keep in your lives forever. Yeah, there's a couple things you need to know if you're going to be bringing home a puppy, especially a Siberian Husky puppy. So that's why today we're going to be going over the top five things you must buy when you are bringing home a little baby doggo. So come and join me, will you? And let's explore those five things that you must have. Oh my goodness, time to get crazy. Thank you guys so much for joining me on another episode of 60 Formula. Let's get wild. Come on, let's go. Oh, she's got him in a chokehold. She's got him in a chokehold. Oh, she's gonna bring him down. She's gonna bring him downtown. Oh, she brought him downtown. Whoa. Look at that mohawk, bro. I remember when I brought these guys home when they were little itty bitty pepperoni pizzas. And oh my God, it is such a crazy experience. Puppies are so much crazier than dogs are. They just don't know what life is. They don't know how to sleep regularly. They don't know how to poop or pee outside. They don't know how to not bite you. They don't know when to eat. They need to eat a million times a day. It's a crazy circus. I'm going to gift you guys with some of the best tips that I can give you if you're bringing home a puppy. So these are the top five things that you should arm yourself with if you're bringing home a baby dog. Come on, let's check it out. What are you doing? <laughs> Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here, weirdo. I'm going to use you as a steed if you don't get out of here. I hold silver away. She doesn't even care. Get out of here. All right, so you just bought a brand new baby pup. Congratulations. They are an awesome, awesome gift and a great responsibility. Now, let's talk number five on one of the things that you should prepare yourself when buying a puppy. Number five is right here. And we're talking baby gates. Now, why a baby gate, you might ask? Baby gates are going to limit your puppy from certain parts of the house. What is this? <laughs> yeah, good Bowie. You said you good Bowie. So basically what baby gates are going to do is they're going to limit your puppy from certain parts of the house. You don't want your puppy to have access to all parts of the house as soon as you bring them home. The house is way too big to introduce a puppy to right away. So one of the first things you want to get is a baby gate. Now right here I have two different baby gates. The first one I used for Gila and the brand is called Regalo or Regalo. I'll show you right here. And the second one I used for Britney Spears, and it is Top Paw, which you guys might be familiar with that brand. Both of these gates work wonderfully, I will tell you that. The only difference really is that this one was made for human beings, and this one was specifically made for dogs. The top one up here. Now, <laughs> the, the difference really is that this one's taller. This is a much taller baby gate, and that's just a little bit of a shorter baby gate. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you get because you're going to be working with a baby puppo, all right? But just know that Siberian Huskies are known to jump. You really want to get the tallest gate that you can. So if you want a super tall gate, I really recommend getting the baby gates for like little human babies because they are actually mega tall. I want to stress because it's really important when you come home with your puppy limit them to what rooms they can go into So let's say you bring them home. All right I would let my puppy live in this little this little area right here And I would block off the kitchen and the rest of the house with a baby gate here. Here's a door I keep it closed the puppy would only have access to this part of the room right here. And then as the puppy grows, a couple months go by, then you can let the puppy go into the kitchen. You do this step by step, just how we've been talking about with tips and tricks and teaching your dog how to do things. You are going to do this step by step, introducing your puppy to the house. So the number five thing that you must have is a baby gate. All right, on to the next one. Now the next step we are talking is puppy toys. Now puppy toys are mega important because they do a bunch of different things. They keep your puppy occupied, they keep their mind going, and they also prevent them and teach them to stop 
biting. All right, a lot of people who get Siberian Huskies have problems with biting, and they always ask, hey, you know, my Husky bites so much, my Husky always bites. These are the things that are going to help you out. These are the tools, these toys right here, and I'm gonna teach you exactly which toys you should get when you're bringing home a puppy. The first type of toy are just small plush toys, like this little dog and this little pig, okay? These toys are basically what you would call reward toys. These aren't toys you should like have left around when you're not at home. Although I would agree, most people who do own dogs leave out plush toys for their dogs at all times. But if you're serious about training, you should save these for training purposes and special times. If there's one thing out there that works better than treats as a reward, it's a high value toy. Now the next type of toy is a toy that you don't have to use as a reward toy. You can just have them out all the time. These kinds of toys consist of like antlers or bones or just hard things that your dog likes to chew on. Now these promote good dental health, they clean your dog's teeth, and they also teach your dog to stop biting you, especially when they're a puppy. Now a lot of people say, hey, my puppy's biting me, I can't stand it. Well, one thing you want to do when your puppy is biting you, A, let them bite you because when your dog is a puppy, they're learning their bite threshold, all right? They need to know how hard they're able to bite when they become an adult. But if it's getting to a point where, you know, they're biting all the time and it's driving you crazy, simply replace one of these toys with your arm or your finger or whatever it is that they're biting. Put this directly into their mouth when they're biting you and replace it each time. It's gonna take a really long time, but these are the tools that teach your dog to eventually stop biting. And when they become adults, they like to just chew on these things, gnaw on them, just sit with them in their mouths. They just become the toys that they sit around with and have fun with on a regular basis. So. What kind of toys should you get your puppy? The answer is both. Get them soft plush toys as well as hard toys that they can teethe with. Because I forgot to mention, puppies are going to teethe. They're going to lose all their teeth and it's going to drive you nuts. So do yourself a favor. Get something hard so that they can chew on it and they won't be bugging you all the time. The number three thing that you should buy your puppy before it comes home is yes, the thing you've always dreaded, a kennel. You're probably asking yourself, are kennels bad? Why should I buy a kennel? Aren't they terrible to buy for your dog? I'd say this is one of the most important things that you need to buy for a puppy. Puppies don't know anything about the world. They're not prepared yet. You're going to prepare them for all of the crazy things that they're going to do in their life. A kennel is an amazing way to train your dog to stay safe. It's not necessary to kennel your dog all day. In fact, it's wrong. This is one of the reasons why kennels do get a bad rap because a lot of people like to take their dog, leave it in a kennel for like eight hours a day and then come home and they're like, what? Nothing's wrong. That is not what you do. Kennels are basically just for your keeping your dog safe when you are not around to supervise them. I want to go into a lot talking about kennel training because it's really important. When you have a puppy, you really need to teach them to be kennel trained. And it's one of the hardest, most heartbreaking, trying training processes that you can experience as not only a trainer, but as a dog owner too. It's so difficult because when you train your puppy to be uh, kennel trained, they are going to scream, they are going to cry, and you can't let them out because it will teach them that screaming and crying will give them what they want. It's a terribly, terribly hard and trying process. Never leave your dogs in a cage if there's a storm. Never ever leave your dogs in a cage if you're gonna be gone for long periods of time. I'll go over this in a video later and we will talk about it, but I just wanna let you guys know this is a number three item that you must have if you're bringing home a puppy or a baby Siberian Husky. All right, on to the number two thing that you should absolutely get your puppy, and that is a harness. Now, you probably already went and got your puppy a leash and a collar, and that's to be expected. You wanna make sure you have everything you need to take your dog on a walk. You're gonna wanna show this beautiful beast off, but let me tell you, if you're gonna get a Siberian Husky or a crazy hyper breed, you're gonna wanna get yourself a harness. You're probably wondering maybe what's a harness. Well, a harness is a collar that kind of straps around your entire dog's body. Now, 
It's been known that collars are easy to escape from, especially if you have Huskies and they act like Harry Houdini. Huskies are known to be escape artists, so it's important to get one of these. Now, I have two different sizes here. One is a small, I got this when they were little bitty puppies. This fits a tiny little baby dog. And then the other one is Gila's Now, and this is what she wears. These are super important when you're going out in public or going somewhere where you're not prepared to have your dog off leash because they prevent your husky from doing the escape act. Isn't that right, buddy? Yeah, that's right. He's a good boy. That's a good boy. Be sure you get your puppy a harness before he comes home so that you never have to worry about him escaping on your walks. The last thing you want to do is lose your little pepperoni pizza. And last but not least, the number one thing you want to make sure you bring home when you get a puppy is good, nutritious food and treats. Bam! Make sure you get amazing food for your puppy. You do not want to feed your dog any of the bad stuff that is for sale out there. Now, I try to go over in my episodes what types of food are the best, but you know, it's always a epic search when it comes to finding the right kind of food. So here we got Merrick. Now, make sure when you're finding some food for your puppy, it can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be Merrick. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Merrick or anything. I just really like their food. But whatever food you do decide to get, make sure it is grain free. There may be peas or potatoes and you can hear about all these different things like lentils aren't good, yada, yada, yada. You be the judge, but make sure you get a good, wholesome, grain free food for your puppy. Make sure you also do the same when it comes to treats. Now these are lamb lung treats and organs are really good for your dog. Dogs are supposed to get some organs in their diet and a lot of dry food doesn't really include that. So make sure you get something like that when you get treats and also make sure you get things that help your dog's dental hygiene. Make sure you get a toothbrush, just an old regular toothbrush from the store. Make sure you get some greenies. They're really good. They freshen your dog's breath up. These are the types of things you're going to want to get your dog. Yeah, it costs a little bit of money to buy this stuff, but you want to make sure that your puppo has the best, best, best that they can have. And those are all the things that you need to make sure that you have when you bring home an itsy bitsy teensy weensy little bitty puppy. All right, guys, thanks so much. I hope you guys enjoyed. That was the episode today. I hope those tips helped you. If you're bringing home a baby puppy, if they did, go ahead and smash that like button and hit subscribe if you aren't already. And if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. I'm always happy to answer them. Listen, guys, it's never easy bringing home a puppy. It is a very hard process. It takes time to get used to what your puppy needs and what you are expecting of them. So be patient with your dogs. You may be thinking, oh my gosh, my dog won't stop biting. My dog won't stop doing this. My dog's doing that. Don't worry. They're going to knock it off. They're going to grow out of it. Puppies need time to grow up. With that being said, guys, I really appreciate you watching. I really, really do. And tomorrow we'll see you with another episode of whatever we make. Peace. He was like, don't even do that no more, bro. I ain't getting paid. Peace, guys. Thank you.